Lego is like Minecraft hardcore. Make one wrong step and you're gone for good. Which means Lego Technic is like Minecraft Redstone. Ooh, I should build a life-size Minecraft piston out of Lego. By the way, this became one of my biggest and heaviest builds ever, so do stick around till the end. This is a minifigure-sized Minecraft piston. It's boring, looks bad, and doesn't even work. Let's scale it up a little. Minecraft block is 16 by 16 by 16 pixels, and we can make a perfect Lego square by stacking a plate and a tile on a 2x2 brick. So if I take this 32 by 32 base plate, it's actually the perfect size to make a life-size Minecraft block. Wait. Oh. Well, I'm gonna pretend it's life-size anyways. Unfortunately, because this part of the piston block moves at the bottom, I can't use this base plate because it would look weird if part of the base plate was sticking out when the piston was extended. So instead, I'm going to make a 32 by 24 base for the cobblestone part of the piston. I'm using this piston in the game as a reference for my build, and I just realized all the plates I just laid down need to be black. So, uh, let's fix that. Okay, so now I need to build four tall pillars about 26.6 bricks high. I'm gonna have to use a lot of black bricks and plates. I started by building a bunch of black pixels for each corner with these 2x2 two two bricks and plates, and of course I've run out, so I switched to using 1x2 bricks and plates to make even more pixels. Then I ran out of those two, so I calculated how much more for each pillar I needed and only finished two. Thankfully, I decided to line up one to make sure it was the right height, but it was way too long. Not sure what type of math I was using to calculate that, but I still have a long way to go, so I don't have time to mourn the lost brain cells. Next, I need to build three walls on the outside of the piston. I'm gonna use gray and dark gray pieces, even though there's like a kajillion different colors in the actual cobblestone texture, but LEGO doesn't exactly have all those colors. The first layer may have taken like three tries to work out because I kept forgetting how many pixels each block is, but I eventually figured it out. Then I started building up the wall. But there was a sinking feeling because deep down I knew I didn't have close to enough parts to finish all the walls. And you know what else I probably don't have enough of? Views on this video, because if this video gets 1 million views, I'm gonna buy a Lambo. Yes, it's made out of Lego, and yes, it's like 10,000 times cheaper than a real Lambo, but it's still a Lambo. So make sure you like and stay all the way to the end of the video. But I still have to somehow fill in three walls of the piston, so I hopped into creative mode and went into Bricklink, a Lego buying and selling marketplace to order a bunch of gray and dark gray pieces. I ordered some 2x6, 2x4, and 2x2 bricks and plates in dark gray and normal gray. But with my off-camera mining session complete, I now had to wait a whole whopping five days for my LEGO to come. Man, I could use some instant gratification right now. But that's okay because I still have an entire moving part of the piston to build. I started by laying out a layer of four stud-wide plates and started adding some dark tan bricks. Then I realized I definitely don't have enough dark tan to make an entire piston, so yeah. So because I don't have enough dark tan bricks, I'm going to use my big brain and utilize my large amount of dark 2x2 tan tiles. If I use these snot bricks with a brick and a plate and a tile, it's the exact same thickness as three studs. So for every dark line in the front of the piston, I can just add a layer of these tiles. I slowly built up the front of the piston and used the same technique for all the sides. I also made sure to add these gray bits in the corners of the piston and somehow miraculously everything started lining up. Okay, so I'm almost finished with the front of the piston, but we need to cover up the top. I built the same sideways technique that I used for the rest of the dark lines, but the pieces used to hook them in stick up too high and aren't dark tan, so I'm gonna have to use normal pieces for this part. I don't think I have enough tan tiles. We're gonna have to resort to using 1x2 tiles to cover the rest up. And that's done. I think it looks really good, but now we need to build the actual piston beam part of the build, but that shouldn't be too difficult. I got out a bunch of tan bricks and used plates to form a base for the piston. To make sure it was stable and so the front wouldn't rip off the front of the piston, I locked in the beam with a bunch of pieces. So I need to cover the beam in some sort of tiles, and it would make sense if they were tan, but I basically have no tan left, so I think I'm gonna use gray. Plus, the gear racks I'm using will be gray as well, and speaking of gear racks, it's time I figured out how exactly to check off the working part of this build. Originally, I was going to motorize the piston and activate it by turning on the battery box, but my friend Brick Science suggested that instead I should put the lever on top of the piston and make it manually open and close. If I hook the lever to an axle that is connected to a gear, I can use a gear ratio to make the ending gear turn much faster than the one connected to the handle. 
This way, while I'm only turning one level a fraction of a rotation, the gear at the end spins multiple times, pushing the piston all the way out. Or at least, that's the general idea. I was planning to have a lever this whole time, but having it on the top is going to make it so much easier. Alrighty, now that the wooden part of the piston is finished, I can build a platform inside the cobblestone part that the piston can slide in and out on. This was simple enough, but I was starting to have second thoughts because it's getting really, really heavy. Just the piston alone weighs a lot. And I'm not sure the gears will be able to push it, but there's only one way to find out. Okay, here's my attempt one. It's getting there, but I still think it could spin faster so that the piston extends further, so we need to gear it up even more. I added another layer of gears and tested it out. Okay, so I think it's fast enough, so I'm gonna try using it on the axle piston. Since I don't have an easy way to secure the lever to the piston, I just decided to hold it in place. I turned it, and, uh, that certainly leaves a lot to be desired. I was pretty sure I had just bent the axle, because the piston is literally so heavy it coils the axle before being turned. After multiple attempts, I was just realizing how heavy the piston actually was. So with that in mind, I decided to resort back to using motors. I got out my strongest and slowest motor, put a gear on it, and turned it on. So it actually pushes the piston, sorta, but to lock the motor sturdily would take so much structure it isn't worth it. I decided to put the piston on wheels. That might sound crazy, but I have these small wheels that would fit on the bottom, and if I just raise up the base of the cobblestone part, it will hopefully work much better. Okay. Perfect, but now it looks weird, so we're gonna have to build an entire grass base for the piston. This is gonna be big. I went with a 48 by 48 base plate because it fits perfectly with the piston and gives enough room around the sides to look like a grass block. Okay, now we need to add a layer of brown bricks and then a bunch of plates. I also added two rows of smooth brown tiles so that the wheels would still roll smoothly. And finally, after hours of work, um, yeah, I still have a lot to do. I was still waiting for my package to arrive, so I decided to finish up the wall that I started while I waited for them to come. I barely had enough parts and had to cut some corners, but with that, the wall was finished. I got to work building up the walls. Man, I need a bigger desk. Please subscribe. I definitely underordered the pieces, but I used my big brain to cut some corners again, but after another hour of work, all three walls were finished. And with that all done, it was finally ready for mechanism time. Even though the wheels making it roll a lot easier, I decided to not use motors and gears and go for a simpler, more effective route. I built a small contraption at the top of the piston that could hold the lever in place while still allowing it to go up and down and tilt to either side. Then I made the actual lever longer so it could reach down and connect into the piston beam. I took off the gear racks and made a platform to hook the lever onto. And wait, it actually works. Good thing I didn't waste a couple hours trying a way more complicated method. I finished up the top of the model by creating the same cobbled pattern with a bunch of 2x2 gray and dark gray tiles and built up the base of the lever. Even though the actual in-game lever is 3 pixels tall, I could only make mine one, otherwise the lever would not have enough room to tilt open and close. Okay, now we need to change the color of the level because for some reason I thought it should be gray, not brown. And finally, we need to add a wall of gray bricks behind the piston to close it all up. And now it's officially done. I just made a working life-size lever-activated Minecraft piston and it looks so sick. Plus like, it works.